Pretty goddamn close. Pretty goddamn close. Alright, so I got a brand new cutoff wheel made by Warrior. We're going to see how it does cutting through 8th inch square tube. Here it is, the Titanium Plasma 45. Can do 110 or 220 volt. This is your plasma cutter that they gave you. There's the tip on the inside. Here's your ground clamp. It's actually a really nice ground clamp. Clamp that onto our project. Here's our line that we're gonna be cutting. Here's the warning. This is your air filtration. This is where the air goes in. This is our power button. Now, this machine does not have a regulator on it, okay? So you cannot adjust the amount of pressure. How this works is you have an amperage setting right here. Now we're cutting through eighth inch thick steel and I've been advised to run it at about 32. Uh, you can read the instructions for yourself. We're gonna start with 32 and just see uh, how it works. 
All right, just as an extra added safety precaution, probably don't need to because I'm outside, I'm in a well-ventilated area, but I do have a fire blanket that you could pick up from Harbor Freight as well underneath it. So now we're going to cut, it's going to fall, we're going to see uh, just how good this fire blanket is in case you were wondering and had not used yours yet. We're going to find out. So let me get these off. Okay, now it did say to use an ANSI ANSI approved welding hood. So I did, I couldn't see shit. I saw barely just a little spark. So now I got my brazing goggles on, hoping I don't get flash burn. Hopefully I could do that with that. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to wear here. I've watched like five or six videos and guys just throwing on random stuff. Some guys have welding hoods on, some guys got these goggles on. I really wish somebody would make that more clear. Okay, but looking at our cut, and I am definitely offline here, uh, but at least I went the other way of the unusable metal that we don't need. Uh, I definitely need to go deeper. I almost went through, but not all the way. So we're going to go to... Uh, somewhere in between 35 and 40 amps. Here's our little safety trigger. So when we're ready, we lift that up. Let's try again. my next question was can I run my air compressor and the plasma cutter off of a 15 amp circuit uh, the answer is no I cannot okay looking underneath the metal now we are actually making light on the underside so we will have to turn it up a bit more so I think we're just gonna go for the gusto man we're gonna go between 40 and 45 45 would be max um, I gotta fix the breaker. Well, that could have gone smoother. Uh, lots of little, tiny, novice mistakes along the way while trying to create a functional welding station. Number one, failure to plan on my material. I had plenty of square tubing. I knew I had enough square tubing to frame the entire uh, tabletop itself. What I didn't plan on was how much of what size square tubing I had. So I started off with one inch square tubing, didn't have enough to frame the whole thing around the outside of the parameter of it, had to jump over to three quarter inch. Now that would have been a bigger problem for me because of how it's setting up, but I'm not planning on doing a lot of heavy duty beating and hammering. Either way, it's still framed and welded together. Also, my toolbox kind of has this dip, I don't know what, but the three quarter inch square tubing toward the back run flush and then as it gets up closer to the front here, it kind of goes up. So maybe I had some warpage already in my toolbox from beating and hammering on things on it in the past. Let's talk about some other little issues that I ran into, novicely speaking. I have been 
unfamiliar with using a plasma cutter in about 20 years. I haven't used one in 20 years, not since I took a welding class at high school. And what I didn't know going into it was whether or not I should wear a welding hood or brazing glasses. And I probably should have used a little common sense here because the oxine acetylene torch, when you're, run, when you're running that, you're using some brazing goggles, not a welding hood. Not thinking about it at the time, I actually started off with the welding hood because the instructions say wear an ANC approved uh, welding hood uh, when operating this plasma cutter. Well, brazing glasses, okay? I used this, couldn't see crap. Jumped over to the brazing glasses, night and day, okay? Was like wearing a nice pair of sunglasses, but I was well protected all the way around. Something else that I didn't take into consideration, or at least didn't put a whole bunch of emphasis on, was how much amperage I was going to be demanding from the circuit uh, breaker out back. Running off of a 15 amp circuit breaker, I was demanding enough amperage to go through not only the plasma cutter, but my air compressor as well. That didn't work. The air compressor, I don't know if it has enough CFMs or if it has the type of capacity that I need to run a plasma cutter. It is a 22 gallon plasma cutter, but I think I only got about two feet before I ran out of air and the compressor would kick on. And then of course we had problems with the circuit breaker kept on tripping. So I can't make a full uh, first impression of this tool yet until I get something figured out. What I will say is I was surprised at how much I had to turn up this knob to get the depth of the cut that I wanted for this eighth inch steel. Now this is supposed to be capable of cutting up to five eighths of an inch and up to a maximum one inch. I'm wondering if a lot of that has to do with running off of 240 versus 120. Okay, I don't know. That could be a huge difference as far as its depth and its ability to cut. How much can it cut running off of 120? Well, I was almost maxed out uh, and I was making some daylight underneath. If I would have been maxed out, I'm sure I could have cut through this eighth inch thick steel, but I don't believe you could cut through anything thicker than this uh, without being on a 240 circuit. That's my thought going into this, okay? I will try to get more detailed information from the tool developer crew over at Harbor Freight on what its capabilities are and ranges are from 120 to 240 and we'll get more information about this product as time progresses but these are my initial thoughts kind of going into it before I have a conversation with them. The Titanium MiG-170 somebody did make a comment that was very helpful saying you should really try to push your weld and I was like okay I hadn't done that yet because I'd had a flux core the Chicago Electric 90 amp flux core and if you got slag, you drag, right? So I've always just done the little horseshoes while dragging, and then I can kind of see it as it's unfolding in front of me. The push method was never real comfortable for me with uh, running flux core because it just kept building up or I would end up dragging it, or I would end up pushing it the other direction and it just didn't come out good, so I always dragged my welds. I tried the push method with the solid wire and the gas, and I'll tell you, I had much better results and I was actually pretty happy with that style when it comes to solid wire. So thank you for the tip, I appreciate that. Going a little bit more in depth with the Titanium MiG-170, I've had it for about six to eight months now. I have enjoyed using it, again, intermittently, okay? It's an at-home hobbyist welder. I'm not doing it in the industrial world of welding. Um, I don't want you guys to think that I'm trying to advocate that you should go out and buy this, okay? If you're an at-home DIY hobbyist, maybe a couple of quick little repairs, you know, at the house, like on leaf springs, I had a leaf spring that broke on my trailer and I was able to fix with that flux core welder. Look, it'll get you out of a pinch, okay? These welds are definitely a lot better looking with the Titanium MiG-170 over the Chicago Electric. So Denna Tools, I think, said it best, good, better, best okay I haven't tried the Vulcan lineup yet but I have been using the titanium far better results the titanium over Chicago electric so that's my opinion on that now that being said I will tell you that when I went to use my dad's Miller 211 now granted this is way different okay that welder whoo, the smoothest most prettiest of welds you'd ever see you don't even have to be a pro welder. You grab that MIG up and, and run a bead, 
Man, that thing is crispy smooth, good penetration, the weld looks beautiful. It'll make any novice welder look like he'd been doing it for years. So yes, there is a price difference for sure between this, uh, with coupon, I think this MIG 170 runs about 450. Uh, when I was looking at the Miller, I think I was closer to about 12 or 1300 bucks. So there is a substantial price difference for the type of welds that you want to achieve. Keep that in the back of your head, okay? Talking about consumables real quick, so I did get a chance to run through about a half a dozen of these Warrior cutoff wheels as I was cutting and framing this thing. And I will tell you, I don't see any extra added improvement over the Chicago electric ones. I was talking with the manager at Harbor Freight and he said that they had made drastic changes and that these things were far better. Um, so I, you know, I had a pack of them here at the house. I wanted to try them out and see what I thought. And uh, to be honest, I, I don't really see the difference. Um, I got the same amount of cuts and the same amount of results that you can expect from these type of cutoff wheels. I will tell you that 3M is by far a better product and that you won't have to worry about fraying, splitting, or coming apart while you're using them. But they are cheap and they're all disposable, okay? You're gonna go through them. That's just, so you save your money where you want. Okay, I blew through about a half a dozen and I got my project pretty much almost all done in frame. They're clamps, okay? These are both Pittsburgh clamps. I use them for welding. Look, they work well for me because I'm planning on getting them all slagged, beat up, dropped, kicked, etc. I don't care if I get slag on them, so. I know that Irwin makes a phenomenal product when it comes to clamps. Maybe you have a lot better luck with the Irwin over, say, like the Pittsburgh, where like this one, I wasn't getting the same bite on the metal as I used to. So I don't know if that's just because it's worn out over time. I've had this now for probably about the better bit of about a year or two. Um, it still works, okay? But uh, yeah, Irwin's by far a better product, but these are cheap, and you're gonna get slag on them. And if you don't wanna jack yours up, I don't know. I say this because you think it's funny, but I got a lot of people that actually, they'll buy a tool, but they don't want to use it in the manner in which it was intended for, so, I don't know, it's whatever. Like I said, if I drop that, or I get slag on it, you ain't hurting my feelings or wallet. Talking about the Hercules angle grinder, so, likes and dislikes. What I liked about it was that I ran this thing for a few hours of use. Switching back and forth between the sanding disc, the grinding disc, the cutoff disc. Look, if you're having to switch in and out of these things, it is a little extra time to do so. So your options are what? Well, you can have two or three of these things already set up for either grinding or sanding. That way you don't have to keep on uh, changing out the deal. Or you can buy one and change it out and take a few extra moments. Uh, overall, pretty impressed with the Hercules uh, angle grinder. We'll say that what I did not like, and it's something that I've mentioned in previous videos, is the paddle feature. I'm just not a huge fan of the paddle design, okay? When you have thick cowhide gloves on, when you have these thick cowhide gloves on, and you wanna to try to engage this thing, sometimes you gotta play, it's just, it ain't for me, okay? I like the DeWalt one where you push it up and it automatically locks it in place. To pull the paddle back, hold it down, and then push this other button over here on the side to lock it in place, okay? It's just, uh, it it's, takes some getting used to. For an at-home die grinder for some intermittent use, cool, rock and roll, man. The fire blanket, fire blanket held up good. I threw this over my extension cord while I was running the welder, while I was running the plasma cutter. I threw it underneath the, uh, the piece where I was gonna be cutting through and have the metal and slag fall down onto the ground. Works great. Didn't have any burn throughs or anything like that. It held up fine. So, yeah, not a bad product to have. Hammer claw. You'll notice in the video I use this hammer claw, this DeWalt hammer claw. Believe it or not, I actually prefer me a little hammer claw when I'm doing welding because I can use it as a slag hammer too. Now I have a slag hammer up there that uh, I got from Harbor Freight and you know I gotta tell you, I didn't really use it a lot when I was doing flux core and I still don't use it at all when it comes to solid wire. Uh, slag hammer has its time and place and it's mostly geared towards flux core 
welding. I just found that, you know, smacking it real quick with a regular hammer and then taking a wire brush to it uh, does pretty much the same exact purpose. Um, that's pretty much it. All right, guys, so that'll wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll get some Q&A done with the guys over at Harbor Freight and get some more answers on this uh, product up here. This product is not expected to hit shelves until the first quarter, so sometime in 2020. Right now, I'm kind of putting it through the paces, testing it out, letting them know of some known issues that I have as a home user, okay? Because those are the kind of questions that they want to know. Is it going to, you know... In what manner would you use it if you were a home user? Like if you did it for a hobby and you were at the house, what kind of situations are you going to run into? Well, one, is the air compressor big enough? Two, is the amperage that I'm demanding from my household circuit big enough to accommodate both? Do I have to run it on two separate circuits? Uh, when it comes to 120 or 240, uh, which one cuts up to how much thick of steel? These are all questions that we'll try to get answered for you guys a little bit later on. That's all I got for this video. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's content. We'll see you guys next time. Deuces.